Equal parts raunchy and profound, today an instant finalist for the Political Ad Hall of Fame. It is from a liberal PAC called Progress Action Fund, and they want people in Ohio to vote against what is called State Issue 1. Now, State Issue 1 would require any proposed amendment to the Constitution of the state of Ohio to receive the approval of at least 60 percent of eligible voters voting on the proposed amendment. Advocates for reproductive rights insist it is a way to circumvent basic democracy, basic majority rule, in order to prevent the legalization of abortion health care ahead of a referendum asking that question in November. Now, before we play the ad, which, as I said, a little raunchy, and we understand is running on Connected TV's online platforms and streaming services in Ohio, a little heads up, the primary reason the ad is so effective is its PG-13 rating. It's a little risque, so if there are any little ones in the room, you may want to tell them to go get you a Diet Coke. But keep in mind, the whole point is to get all of us to pay attention. It got my attention. You can judge for yourself. Do you have a condom? Yeah. <laughs> no! Sorry, you can't use those. What are you talking about? Who are you? I'm your Republican congressman. Now that we're in charge, we're banning birth control. This is our decision, not yours. Get out of our bedroom. I won the last election. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to watch and make sure you don't do anything illegal. No good luck getting that ad out of your head. Ohioans vote on August 8th. Let's bring Democratic strategist and director of the public policy program at Hunter College, Basil Smichel. Claire is with us as well. You know, Claire, Oz lost because he said it. And I'm actually surprised that it took this long to put what Oz said into an ad when he said, so when you're in the doctor's office, it'll be you, your doctor, and a Republican elected official. That's what that would look like. Exactly. And the Republicans in Ohio are being incredibly hypocritical. Uh, the Secretary of State actually said at a Republican rally, 100 percent, they put this on a statewide ballot issue in the middle of summer all by itself because they're trying to stop Ohioans from being able to protect reproductive rights in the fall. This is all about stopping the majority of Ohio having their say. And the last poll in Ohio said that 59 percent of Ohio wanted there to be less restrictions on abortion. And that's really what this is all about. It is about the government in your bedroom. It is about the government taking away your freedom. And it's pretty outrageous. The ad is terrific, by the way. People will not forget it after they see it. What I like about the ad is that, and, and I'm guilty of this too, we can cover abortion as a woman's problem. But the reason it's such a potent political issue is because men are, are for mm -hmm. access to legal abortion as well. The reason the red tide didn't come to pass is because as powerful as women are in American politics, men are also voting against the extreme bans and the extreme pro-life candidates. And I like that this ad puts the man back in the conversation. Yeah, it does. And to Claire's point, it's uh, it's jarring because you don't know what you're watching at first. And, <laughs> you do and, not. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, let me let me sit through this for yeah. a minute and see what's going on. And as it as it plays out, you see it getting creepier and creepier. The individual, the language down to the red tie. When he looks like about, a Republican. It, down to the red tie, saying, "I'm I am in your bedroom, and now I'm making policy for you." And to your point, as you bring in the men in this conversation, it's like, yeah, we can always in. The in some ways, you can't marginalize it. You can't project outward and say, this is really not my issue. I'm going to be an ally. Like, what the ad is saying is that, no, not only am I an ally as a man, but I'm actually part of this conversation, too, to an extent. And I need to be able to go out and support myself, but also the women in my life on these issues. Incredibly important. I would also say that... As, as far as the as far as the ballot measure goes, you know, there are similar measures in Arizona, Pennsylvania, Iowa, South Dakota. And I like this, not the fact that we have to fight for this issue, but I like the fact that, you know, where California was uh, would put almost everything on their ballot. Um, mm -hmm. There are other states that didn't have as much activity, ballot activity. Mm -hmm. And now it's a mobilizing issue because you're getting people out to go vote on these ballot initiatives. It has impacts for running, if you're running for governor, running for st yeah. uh, state ledge, you can actually raise money off of this issue. And so for Democratic governors, Democratic state legislatures, legislators, this is a, this is a really important time to mobilize your base and be able to raise money off of this and right. get people out. 
And let me just be, this may be remedial from all my sort of democracy hawks that watch this show, but the reason, Claire, they're trying to change the threshold is because abortion is a loser for Republicans. They can't defeat access to reproductive health care if they go to any electorate in Kansas, for example, um, in Ohio, um, with a 50-50 proposition. That is why they're changing the threshold, because they know the majority of Americans. This is signaling everything that anyone needs to know about what a weakened state Republicans are in politically because of their support for this Supreme Court and because of their support for the extreme bans. Yeah, they are putting up a flashy neon sign that says, we know we don't represent the majority. We know we are out of step with most people in our state. And we are not going to change our view. Instead, we're going to make it harder for the majority to have their will. And that is really, really, just like our last segment, very un-American and very auto autocratic. And it is awful they're trying to do this. Now, hopefully, like Azel said, it will be a motivator. You know, keep in mind, this provision has been in the law in Ohio since 1912. And had the 60% threshold been in place, there is one ballot issue that I think is notable that wouldn't have passed. And that was allowing black men and women to serve in the National Guard in Ohio mm. because it didn't get 60%. Uh, minimum wage would not have passed in Ohio because it didn't get 60%. Those are the kinds of majority issues that would be denied by these Republicans trying to pull a fast one and deny the majority their say in November. And this is very important, as Basil said, tremendously important for Sherrod Brown and for the control of the Senate. All of this comes into play together, whether or not Mitch McConnell is running the show or whether the Democrats maintain control of the Senate. Ohio is ground zero. We'll stay on it um, ahead of the